Come to the book of Hebrews. <clears throat> we are talking about the heart of the father wanting sons. Um, and we want to discover what that looks like more and more and more. Hebrews chapter 1. Um, <clears throat> And um, we're still under the subject <coughs> of the preeminence of the sun. <coughs> and um, Lindsay, I guess that's what we'll call this next session, the preeminence of the sun. And, and last class, we did kind of venture off into this when we talked about Matthew chapter 3, when the heavens were open and the dove came down, the Holy Spirit and the Father declared his son. And also that similar situation in Matthew 17 at the Transfiguration. But now we just want to look into the scriptures uh, uh, as written concerning what men have seen of this. <clears throat> and the writer of Hebrews begins verse 1. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. And if you, uh, some of you may have a Bible that has a marginal note beside the word by his son. And uh, mine says literally the, the Greek there is in son. God speaks in son, not by his son, not, not the son being there in him speaking to us now and this is how we get it but his language is that we are we are in that son and this is this is incredibly precious i mean behold what manner of love it's incredibly precious because the the father now views us as the body of the son and as one with the son and as members of the son and and from the resurrection anything he declares about the son we're included in that. And, but if we never learn to identify in Son, then we'll always see, we'll always see the Son over here, you know, and we'll go, yeah, the Father loves the Son, and we'll see ourselves out here, and but what about me, what can you do for me? Not realizing that there are resources in Son that are ours, but you draw those out completely different than you would if you were just a believer out here trying to get God to do something for you. Does that make sense? Completely different. And it's a completely different uh, relationship. Okay? And, you know, we, the, the theological term is uh, identification. The spiritual reality is you no longer know yourself after the flesh. you begin to know yourself by Christ. That's the spiritual reality of identification. So, you know, for example, we can teach identification. We can go into all of the aspects of how that's viewed and everything theologically. But, but the Father, and say, let's just, let's just get the Father in this picture now. But the Father wants to see us here. And he wants us to identify there. And when I say identify there, see, even that's ridiculous because we actually are in son. Do, you know, you, do you see what I'm saying? I mean, it's true. Yes, it's true. It's true. It's true. But it's more than identify in the son. It is a recognition that God, you know, like, like the Holy Spirit said to me when I was young, the, that the Father has put you in the safest, most blessed and loved place that you could possibly be. He's put you in the sun. And, you know, again, we have to get out of theology. Um, and I don't have a problem with theology, but I have a problem when theology gets in the way of the heart of God. And uh, we have to get, so in that sense, we have to get out of it so that we can find God's view, and you'll see it every time when he starts talking about his son. Okay. 
So here's someone writing this that has actually seen this reality. <clears throat> um, hath in these last days spoken to us um, in Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Okay, who? The Father hath appointed heir. Everything it's fixing to say, everything it's about to say, is going to be the father-son relationship. That's, see, but we just go, well, well God did this or something like that. Um, <clears throat> appointed heir of all things by whom also he made the worlds, <clears throat> who being the brightness of his glory. Whose glory? The Father's glory. Jesus is the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. The express what? Image. image. Let us make man our own image after our likeness, that you might be conformed to the of the Whoa. See, this is this is going into that eternal plan that we enter into. Well, We've got this guy over here that we enter. Truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> who is be, who being, being the brightness of, not doing. Not about doing. We make it all about doing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be what God wants. No, you're not. <laughs> you know, you might as well face that. You're not going to be what God wants. But he will be, and he will be in you, and you will be in him. You know, what did he say? At that day you will know. Oh, what? You will know that I am in my Father, and he is in me, and I am in you, and you are in me. What a relief. <laughs> um and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins. Okay, so here I come to save the day. By himself he purged our sins. Jesus said, there's a sin problem. Out. No, none of that. <laughs> Jesus came as the Lamb of God and manifested this flow that is, that is between God and laid down his life when he was perfect. He never did anything wrong. He never had a wrong thought. He never had a wrong motivation. He never did anything wrong and yet was willing to be looked upon as wrong. That's the son in you. Same son. So 2,000 years, with God, distance, 2,000 years doesn't make any big difference. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And when we can apply that to not, well, he's the same, so he gave so-and-so in the Bible, uh, you know, blessings and healed them and did all this stuff for them, then he'll do that for me. Well, maybe we need to pull the reality that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever out of that context and begin to see him in light of this context, an eternal context. Anyway, that, that Jesus would be in us and he would be the same. Yes. Self-giving and he, you know. So he's not, Jesus in us is never going, um, <clears throat> well, this isn't fair. The, can I get a full amen there? Amen. Jesus is never, go, you know, looking at it, you know. So who is? I mean, I'm trying to figure out who is, especially, you know. See, one thing we hadn't mentioned here is uh, the cross. We're supposed to be here, crucified, so that we live by the life of another, okay? <clears throat> but what's the point of living by the life of another if we don't live by the life of another? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there is this spirit and, and uh, uh, you know, there's not a one of us in here that doesn't, ha that hasn't had the feeling of, of being in a situation that was unfair. Not a one of us. 
there's, I would imagine that there's not a one of us here that has reacted violently <laughs> at some time or another at the unfairness of you know this and that it's just tr that's life you're gonna you're gonna experience that whether you're a christian or not whether you're a son of god by christ or not you're gonna experience that everybody does <clears throat> this world is you know god doesn't have to arrange stuff this world's ugly enough to bring a bunch of that you know what i mean you know we go the devil's attacking me well just the way the world's spinning is going to bring, you know, situations that are unfair and da 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 da. Um, but the father is looking for his son. That's what he's looking for. That's what we want. And when he gets his son out of you, then he's getting sons in the image of Christ. That makes sense. When he sees that image in you, see. And so, and that's what was there from the very beginning. Let us make man in our own image so that we can get our image out of man. See? And so when, you know, when we look, we're, we're usually dropped way down here to the earth. And we're here and somebody's over here and they did this and they did that. And God's, you know, you don't have to believe this. But I, I believe that God's really, God the Father is not really caught up in the earth like, like we are. We kind of pictured God the Father looking over and going, oh, look what they did to my, my special one, <laughs> my child, my precious. <clears throat> um, He's looking and he's going, well, my special one, my precious, should have manifested Christ in that situation. Yeah. That's, that's what he's looking for. All right. So now let's take that in the context of, of the eternal plan of God in relationship to the Father getting sons. If we ever really saw the heart of God, because that's, I'm telling you, this is heart stuff. It's, it's heart stuff it is not doctrinal he doesn't even give us enough stuff to fully doctrinalize this area of truth he just speaks of it and then we kind of go yeah you know and then go on with the way we are we stay the same you know um but the but his view of this is based on something that was in his heart from the beginning and it's still in his heart our view of it is, you know, see, our light affliction worketh for us while we look not at the things which are temporal, but we look at the things which are eternal. Okay. Well, that means to look in two different places. I mean, really, one's the heart of God in this situation, and the other one's the earth. Uh, or maybe we're looking at the heart of our enemy or the person that, that hurt our feelings or whatever, you know, all the things that do happen to all of us. Um, we're looking into their heart. We're going, well, their heart is wrong. Does that really make any difference to Jesus? I mean, did he stand there in the midst of everybody's motives being wrong, every thought of theirs being wrong, everything totally based on self and how this all affects me, and, he, and did he look at that and go, well, if you people are going to be wrong, I ain't dying for you. No. He's the Lamb of God. He, he looks at those situations and he goes, you know, you've heard this a million times, but he looks at those situations and he says this is an opportunity to release something eternal that can help them. But more importantly than that, more importantly than helping this person whose their heart is wrong, there has to be an awakening of our heart to the heart of the Father so that when we're in that situation, we're functioning in Son, by the nature of the Son, 
to the glory of the Father. Jesus said, I do always those things that please the Father. Amen? I do always those things. Okay, well, does Jesus, is Jesus in you? Yes. Does Jesus live in you? Yes. Does he do always those things that please the Father? I'm sure he would, but I don't let him. Because I'm too busy living. You know, I'm too busy being on the throne. I kicked that lamb off the throne because I knew where that would end. <laughs> Death. Me laying down my life. When they're the one that needs to lay down their life. Okay. See, the father's looking and goes, no son there. You know, his eyes run to and fro. Not just looking for people that know depth and that can talk this stuff, but to those who will walk uprightly. And to walk uprightly, in this case, is the Son and his image being manifested and his nature being manifested through you. So, this is, the, the things I'm talking about right now are at the heart of, of uh, this eternal plan because the, the father wants the son and he wants, it in a, he wants him in a real way. And so, uh, I mean, imagine, imagine, imagine God before time, imagine the father and the Holy Spirit and Jesus say, well, what is it you'd really like? And he says, well, you know, I love you, Jesus, and I'd like there to be an increase of you. Okay. So they, do, they start the plan. You know, let us make man our own image after our likeness. They start the plan, and, and man falls into sin and everything. But man falling into sin, and that's probably something we'll get into, but that didn't change the eternal plan of God. It didn't. It didn't change. Why? You say, well, because the eternal plan of God was written in stone and hidden in a cave in heaven. No. It's what's in the heart of God. That's all that it is. Quit making it something outside of his heart from the very beginning. So, so all, of, all of history, all of Bible history and all the other history happens the father's sitting up there. He's not, see, he's not going, well, I'm reading the newspaper and there's trouble in you know, <laughs> France or something. He, you know, he's not caught up in the earth. He's not, he's just wanting his son out of this. And he's wanting it to be a father-son relationship. He's wanting it to be that kind of a relationship. He's wanting us to, you know, I think, uh, I think sometimes, well, you know, most of y'all know that I was, I had a rough upbringing and, <clears throat> you know, my real father left when I was real, real young and then we were put in foster homes and then I was eventually, my mom remarried and she married a guy that was, of course, both my parents were alcoholics and then she marries a guy uh, that is an alcoholic too after she divorces my father or they divorce and <clears throat> mean spirited you know all my fathers those two were mean spirited and mean to us as kids <clears throat> mean is not uh, is not in terms of what you might think mean is well this or that I mean brutally mean and cruel um, so when, uh, when I, you know, I got married and became a father and had a few circumstances where I saw that I reverted to what I had grown up with, it broke my heart because I didn't know, I didn't know how to be a father and I didn't know the Father. I was saved by that. I mean, I was saved. I knew Jesus. But you know, even then, I pretty much knew Jesus was my Savior, but I didn't know all about him either. <clears throat> so I just asked the Father. I said, Lord, you're the Father. You're what a Father should be like. And 
I don't know what that is. I don't even have a clue. I, I, my second nature of fathering looks like what I saw. And it's ugly and I hate it. So you're going to have to open my heart. You're going to have to. And here's what I told him. I said, you're going to have to father through me. You're going to have to father through me because I don't know how to do it. And I didn't. And I didn't. And that's, you know, that's our only hope on any level. You know, it's not just, oh, make me a father. See, we always, we always want to be us, you know. But, but is there any better father, even though we don't know him and still are suspicious? <laughs> you know, because, I mean, I know that because of my background. It's like, well, Jesus died for me, so I love you. But that guy up there, I'm not sure about. Isn't he the one that was causing all the trouble in the Old Testament? <laughs> you know, I don't know. You know, fathers, when they show up, it gets bad. Um, but so, so to me, it, from what I could feel in me, that was bred in me. It almost felt like DNA in me to be like my real father, my stepfather. Um, so my prayer had to be, you, you know, you father through me. You're not, you're not the best father. In truth, you're probably the only father that's truly a father. And uh, I can tell you, this is the absolute truth, I can tell you that he has fathered me since then and fathered through me. He has done that. And it's... You cannot imagine the difference between my home now and what it was growing up. It's just like, I couldn't have dreamed that it could have been that, that different. So, you know, I'm just saying all that to say, you know, I, you know, I can stand up here and I can teach and I can say, you know, the Father and the Son, I can say all this stuff and just be anybody, anywhere spouting junk but I was desperate to know the Father, and not just to know him, but to have him work through me. And then, you know, even though I knew the Son, it was really Jesus, and it was more Jesus of Nazareth in the Gospels. But, uh, but I had to also begin to respond as a son to the Father, or more specifically, the son <laughs> to the father the way the father would want that response or that um, that coming to him and and I didn't just save it for when I got in trouble because <laughs> you know it's possible to have a father you know the best times he's ever been there for you and that's what you remember instead of an ongoing relationship um, in, in this one. <clears throat> so anyway, um, again, this, this writer, <clears throat> um, you know, most people say it's Paul. It doesn't say if it's Paul or not, so I'm not going to say it's Paul. It's, it could be Paul. I'm just going to refer to him as this writer because it just doesn't say. But whoever wrote this, they are, they are seeing this thing on a completely different level than religion that we normally get. I mean, this is, this is, uh, this should get to us. We shouldn't just read this and go, well, no, 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 we should go, this guy doesn't talk like any of us. This angle of Jesus is not the way that I think of Jesus, you know, who, you know, um, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Talking about the father hath done that with his son, um, uh, who being the brightness of the father's glory. Who's seeing into this? Uh, that, his name isn't here, but who's seeing into this? The brightness of his glory and this son 
because that's what it called him, and will call him for half the book. The express image. Image. To be conformed to the image of this is what he's talking about. His son, his son, his son. The express image of his person. Didn't say the express image of, you know, the family, da 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 da. It's, it's literally, uh, and I love, I love the thought that it is the expressed image of his person. You know, it, he expresses the image of his person. Jesus said it, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, the words that I speak are not my own. Okay, so how, you know, how often do we speak when it's our words? Or, and he said, the works that I do are not my own. They're the Father's in both cases. He's, his point is father-son relationship, his, but his point is also to bring us in to something. He has to awaken us out of our minds, out of our religious viewpoints, out of how we even define and conceive things. And so here, here Jesus, Jesus is the, the Son of God, every bit as much God as the Father, and he says, you know, in the garden, not my will, but thine be done. And y'all heard me share this before, but not my will, but thine be done. And I'm going, Jesus, you're God. You're, yes, your will. You don't need to act this way. And he's going, this is the way God is. I don't want it to be about my will. Even if it's the exact same thing as his will, I choose his will over mine. Exact same thing. We, the Father and the Son have the exact same will, and Jesus says, I'm not going with my will. Okay, how, how much do we want to move into this relationship and in being in this relationship be willing to want it to really be about him, the Father, and my heart and my works and my words, I will, I will say, they're not mine. They're from the Father. It's him in me. The Father doeth the works. The Father in me doeth the works. Um, <clears throat> we'd say, well, Jesus, you know, Jesus healed. You know, remember the time he got in trouble for healing on the Sabbath? And the Pharisees came to him and said, you healed on the Sabbath. Shouldn't be doing any work on the Sabbath. That's wrong. And Jesus said, I didn't do it. It's the Father in me that does it. Um, how confident are we that our relationship is eternal and is based on the Father and the Son and we've entered into that so that I'm not even doing it for Jesus. I'll give you an example. And then I need to quit, I guess. You go through the, go through the um, prayers um, in the New Testament. Not, I guess you can go through the ones in the Gospels. But I'm thinking of in the, in the resurrection, the people that have now seen this, you know, you're talking Peter, and you're talking Paul, and you're talking John. Go through the prayers, and basically all of them are praying to the Father. Okay, now, in Christianity, how much praying goes to Jesus in Christianity? We don't do it in the name of Jesus, we do it to Jesus. That's who we pray to. Okay. So, and I remember discovering this because I, you know, I was in Bible school and said, I am going to study the prayers of the New Testament and the epistles and I'm going to, you know, da 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 da, Mr. Spiritual, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to know stuff, you know. And I, 
and I got in there and I started looking at him and I'm going, whoa, this was an eye opener because my, all my prayers were aimed at Jesus. And so, see, I always, I always have questions. You know, you do realize that Jews have really questioned stuff. And my next question to him was, why, why is everything going to the Father? And the Holy Spirit says, because it's the Son in you that's praying. The Son doesn't pray to the Son. And I went, oh my God. <laughs> what? You know, and these were little things, little seeds along the way to help me to begin to really separate out eternal from natural, from religious, from reality as God knows it. Let's see, I, you know, I really didn't even finish reading the scriptures I wanted to here. So you may hear all of this again next week. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, my words can just be, just can be the ramblings of an idiot if your spirit doesn't breathe and impart apart from just speaking into the air. And Father, I just, I just groan, I just travail that we we can get past our temporal lives. And I know that you're so tender with us all along the way. But Lord, that we come to the end, that we come to the aim, that we come to the goal, that we come to the measure, this measure, of the stature of the fullness of Christ unto a perfect man, not sinless perfect, but perfectly Christ, perfectly your son. Father, I thank you for the hungry hearts that long for you, that long for reality, that have no taste anymore for religion, that have no have no desire to play with teachings and truths. And, and Father, I just ask you to cover them and protect them because the enemy would love to steal, as it says in 2 Corinthians 4, Father, verse 3, I think it is enemy would blind our eyes so that we not see the image that we were supposed to conform to. We only be religious. We only continue in the law. We miss the true purpose. We, get, we become lost to the purpose, not lost in sin or going to hell. Father, help us. And may your spirit move and draw our hearts to another heart, to the heart of the Father. May we reach that heart and find the things that were important to him before the foundation of the world. The things that he so longed for and he longed for out of us. May your spirit be loosed in new ways on us and in us and among us. And may new freedoms come more and more and more so that we really truly understand now the Lord is that spirit. 
where that spirit is, there's liberty. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty. We're dismissed.